In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And brothers and sisters, that we may worthily celebrate together these sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind the need for the forgiveness of our sins while begging God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call all sinners unto yourself. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us now at the right hand of God the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection within our hearts that spirit of adoption of your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, you live in the midst of a rebellious house. They have eyes to see, but do not see, and ears to hear, but do not hear, for they are a rebellious house. Now, son of man, during the day, while they are looking on, prepare your baggage as though for exile. And again, while they are looking on, migrate from where you live to another place. Perhaps they will see that they are a rebellious house. You shall bring out your baggage like an exile in the daytime while they are looking on. In the evening, again while they are looking on, you shall go out like one of those driven into exile. While they look on, dig a hole in the wall and pass through it. While they look on, shoulder the burden and set out in the darkness. Cover your face that you may not see the land, for I have made you a sign for the house of Israel. I did as I was told. During the day, I brought out my baggage as though it were that of an exile, and at evening I dug a hole through the wall with my hand, and while they looked on, set out in the darkness, shouldering my burden. Then in the morning, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, did not the house of Israel, that rebellious house, ask you what you were doing? Tell them, thus says the Lord God. This oracle concerns Jerusalem and the whole house of Israel within it. I am a sign for you. As I have done, so shall it be done to them. As captives, they shall go into exile. The prince who is among them shall shoulder his burden and set out in darkness, going through a hole he has dug out in the wall and covering his face lest he be seen by anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Do not forget the works of the Lord. Do not forget the works of the Lord. They tempted and rebelled against God the Most High and kept not his decrees. They turned back and were faithless like their fathers. They recoiled like a treacherous bow. Do not forget the works of the Lord. They angered him with their high places and with their idols roused his jealousy. God heard and was enraged and utterly rejected Israel. Do not not forget forget the works of the Lord. And he surrendered his strength into captivity, his glory in the hands of the foe. He abandoned his people to the sword and was enraged against his inheritance. Do Do not not forget forget the works of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? And Jesus answered and said to him, I say to you, Not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of that debt. And at that, the servant fell down, paid him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. And moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the entire loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him, started to choke him, and demanded, pay back what you owe. And falling to his knees, the fellow servant begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant thrown into prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you have not had pity on your fellow servant as I have had pity on you? Then in anger, The master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives from the heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Allow, <clears throat> excuse me, allow me to introduce to you our concelebrant here in the sanctuary with me, Father Sylvester. Father Sylvester is visiting from the state of Iowa the Diocese of Des Moines, where he is a parish priest, but in transition to other ministries. And he is here with a few other pilgrims 
to the shrine of the miraculous metal. So oftentimes we have visitors that are here at church with us at St. Vincent's that are visiting, as I say, to the shrine. And it's wonderful to have a fellow priest here as one of those here today. We offer them our hospitality and our best wishes as they travel around and enjoy Perry County. Our gospel lesson today continues the theme, the subject matter of reconciliation where we hear the story of the servant who had a difficult time forgiving after he himself had been forgiven. And sometimes as the story starts out, Peter asks Jesus, how often should I forgive my brother? So there's an issue with frequency that is in store for us. And when it comes to the sacrament of reconciliation, the way that we go about our being reconciled to the Lord our God, when it is with regard to frequency of the sacrament, the church teaches us that the bare minimum of approaching the confessional and the wonders of the grace of reconciliation that are contained within it at least once a year. And the church offers that especially in lieu of making the Easter communion. So maybe during the season of Lent or just prior to Easter time, the penitent, the believer, is in a sense required to make confession. The bare minimum of once a year. Of course, a Catholic believer might find him or herself sinning even gravely more often than that. So obviously whenever there is any mortal sin or depth sin that can cause a hindrance, an obstacle in the relationship with the Lord God, then the sacrament of reconciliation is there for a more frequent use than just one time a year. I like to offer to people the chance to visit the sacrament, let's say, um, every major liturgical season. And especially Lent, as the church does prescribe, as I mentioned earlier, and perhaps the season of Advent, and maybe during even Easter and one of the two ordinary season blocks of time that we have for our liturgical year. So, yep, maybe four times would be helpful. Kind of quarterly we might take it in our fiscal year, our annual year. And it's just a good practice to be involved with um, examining one's conscience, getting in touch with how I have failed in my relationship with the Lord God amongst my brothers and sisters in Christ. And so, yes, it's just a good practice, as I say, to be able to experience that wondrous grace that is offered in the confessional at the sacrament of reconciliation. The stories of our scriptures today present to us how good our God is to us, forgiving us entire debts, hoping that we practice the same model of this God with our relationship with others. So give some thought today to how often in terms of frequency you approach the Lord in the sacrament of reconciliation. And we rise to offer our prayer of the faithful, praying that the Lord may help all members of the church grow in compassion and forgiveness of others. We pray to the Lord. That civic leaders be guided by the Spirit in their efforts to care for the community members they have been elected or appointed to serve. We pray to the Lord that those whose sins separated them from loved ones may receive the grace of God to repentance. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That our faith community of St. Vincent 
be guided by the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ evangelizing the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And that all who have died find peace and eternal light in the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, you know our sins, you know that which separates us from you. In your mercy, hear the prayers we bring before you today, granting our intercessions through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. By this mystery of water and wine, may the Lord share in our humanity and we in this divinity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands to become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Be pleased, Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you will transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent to us as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and then born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, Jesus stretched out his hands as he endured the Passion so as to break the bonds of sin and death and to manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we do declare your glory as with one voice together we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our apostolic administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us, O Lord, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we all may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. I am of God. You take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, Lord, and confirm within us the light of your truths. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.